Hey everyone, it's LaDawn coming at you with a quick video today to talk about how to care for our hair during those blazing hot summer months. So um, I am just going to jump right in and talk about the first topic, which is humidity. For those of you who don't know, humidity is essentially the amount of moisture in the air. When it's really humid out, our hair begins to absorb the moisture that's in the air and it will cause our cuticles to stand up and sometimes that can cause us to have you know really frizzy hair or really undefined curls so usually when we think about humidity especially here in Chicago everyone hates it because you know we don't know how it's going to impact our hair um, but there are ways to actually use humidity for your benefit and so that's what we're going to kind of talk about um, right now Okay, so we're going to talk about humectants. And humectants attract moisture from the atmosphere and they help to retain that water. Um, in either, you know, if it's in a skincare product, it will help to retain that moisture or that water in your skin. If it's a product that you're using for your hair, it helps to retain and attract that moisture to your hair. And there are a variety of different products you can kind of buy on the market. Um, that are humectant or humectants that you can actually you know just purchase and put on your hair um, and they're really good you know essentially if you have dry hair um, it's definitely something that you want to look into um, as a means of naturally attracting water to your hair kind of on a daily basis so I'm going to put a list of uh, humectants in a box here <laughs> okay but some of them are glycerin um, lactic acid uh, sorbitol um, propylene glycol there are a number of them you can actually do searches on the in, uh, internet for humectants and it'll provide a long list of uh, ingredients in hair care products and in skincare products actually that serve as humectants if you don't already you know and invest a little bit of time in learning what it is you're putting on your hair like grab some of your products and look up the first five ingredients of that product on the internet and it'll actually tell you what each of those ingredients um, do I find that that's been incredibly helpful in maintaining healthy hair not only in the summer but during all the four seasons because I can adjust my regimen based upon those ingredients there are times of year where I want to attract moisture and there are times of year where I want to avoid moisture at all costs or you know um, that I don't want to introduce humectants or I only want to introduce them um, so the moderately. first humectant we're going to talk about is glycerin because that seems to be the most you know commonly discussed um, um, ingredient with uh, naturals so uh, glycerin is a humectant and it has a uh, penetrating element to it. Um, it also has a, uh, a softening element. So it's penetrating and it's softening. So if you are, you know, if, if glycerin is in your skincare products, then it's going to penetrate, you know, your skin and soften your skin. If you're having, if it's in your hair care products, then it's going to attract that moisture, it's going to penetrate the hair shaft, and it's going to also soften your hair at the same time. There are two different types of glycerin. There is a vegetable-based glycerin, and there is a um, non-vegetable glycerin. Okay, so I'm going to talk about the vegetable glycerin first. If you're like me, then and you don't mind using you know a humectant on your hair then vegetable glycerin is probably the way you'll want to go vegetable uh, glycerin is um, extracted from a uh, plant and it most commonly um, is found in products that are either certified organic or all natural and contain certified um, organic and natural um, ing uh, ingredients um, in that product like all of the other ingredients are typically organic or um, or natural then there is regular glycerin or non vegetable glycerin and that is extracted through animals and through um, 
um, petroleum-based oils. And those, uh, that type of glycerin is most commonly found in products that are not all natural. Um, and the uh, ingredients are not all natural ingredients as well. So you'll find, you know, um, lots of silicones that are, you know, non-water soluble, you know, um, in those products. And some people are fine with that, you know. Um, so you just have to determine which glycerin You can also right. make your own products that, um, that contain glycerin as well. So you can purchase vegetable glycerin and you can purchase regular glycerin kind of over the counter. Now if you want to uh, combat dryness, like I said, you want to make sure that glycerin appears in um, the first five ingredients or is listed as one of the first five ingredients on your product label. So if you so, don't you know, already, again, like take the time to look at these ingredients and again, if you're suffering from dryness, you want to make sure that you have a humectant in the first, uh, a humectant listed as one of the first five ingredients on your, um, on your product label, okay? Also, you want to step up your deep conditioning um, in the summertime, especially if you have dry hair, because, um, you know, we're not only dealing with hot temperatures, but we're dealing with the intense um, UV rays that, you know, um, hits our hair in the summertime. And so we want to make sure that we're retaining and replenishing as much moisture as possible that's being, um, you know, taken away through the intense sun. All right, so let's talk about UVA and UVV um, rays that are harmful to hair. Um, they dry the hair out, they weaken the hair, um, they will cause you to experience uh, intense um, frizziness, weakness of the hair, of course dryness of the hair, and if you color your hair, they'll also cause your color to fade. So, you know, there are a couple of things you want to do to protect your hair against those uh, those rays and one of those things is you know you might want to rock a fedora like I'm doing um, if you do opt to select a hat you'll want to make sure that the hat is wide enough or has a brim that's if you're wearing your hair out I always wear my hair out I very rarely use protective styling so um, so when I purchase hats I always want to make sure that this brim is wide enough to cover my head so if I do this, I can go out and I'm still protecting the hair that's underneath it. Um, you really have to take into consideration the size of your hair um, and, of course, style <laughs> when selecting your hats. So sometimes, you know, you may not, depending on how long your hair is, you may not be able to find an appropriately sized hat with an appropriately sized brim, um, you know, in your women's department. So don't hesitate to go, like, to the men's department. They have really cool fedoras um, that, you know, you can even make a little more feminine by add, adding, you know, a little something like this or a flower or a ribbon or, you know, or you may just want to rock it the way it appears. But, you know, definitely try it on. Make sure that your hair can fit underneath the hat. <laughs> and then make sure that the brim is wide enough that it will cover your hair. Like, I don't, you don't need it out here like you're in a color purple or anything, but just wide enough that... If the sun is beating down, you're providing co uh, coverage and protection to, to most of your hair. Another thing you might want to consider um, are scarves. Now, I'm not a big scarf wearer, but, you know, there are so many beautiful ways I've seen women rock scarves. So, you know, if you like to do the turban thing or you want to experiment with that, you know, just make sure that you buy fabric that's long enough for you to be able to fold multiple times, you know, to do all of the beautiful uh, turban-like, you know, hairstyles. Um, you can also, so you can buy a scarf to do that, but you could also go to your local fabric store and just ask them for maybe two yards of a particular uh, fabric, and you could probably get that fabric for under $10, which is pretty inexpensive um, 
you know, or if you don't want to do um, like a turban look, but you know, you just want a scarf that you can tie and maybe make a nice bow or or what have you know what have you you might just want a yard and you could get that for less than five dollars so it's much cheaper <laughs> um, much less expensive than you know going to um, a department store for instance um, another thing you can do is uh, purchase the uh, SPF um, uh, sprays or refreshers for your hair um, Aveda has a great one of those also I think Redken um, and other uh, uh, product lines that make hair color, they generally have um, protectants for hair uh, for summer or refreshers for hair for summer that you can spray on or sometimes it's a cream. And um, you can use that on your hair to protect it from uh, UVA and uh, UVB rays as well. Also, what I do is, because I'm always trying to multi-purpose whatever it is I have um, and watch my dollars. Um, I actually make my own uh, UBA, UBV protectant and I'll make a video on how I do that and I use it throughout the day. Um, another thing you want to do if you're using a, um, uh, a UBA uh, or UVB refresher on your hair by Aveda, one that you make, or you know, one that is produced by you know whomever you have your hair color through. Make sure that you clarify your hair more often. Um, those those protectants typically um, leave product buildup, or they can leave product buildup. So to make sure that your curls remain light and you know have lots of body and and all of that stuff, then you'll just want to make sure that you clarify. Also, 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 my daughter learned this last year actually. You want to make sure that not only are you applying that UBA protection to your hair, but you'll want to make sure that if you're protective styling, that you're, um, you're using full strength UBA, uh, UVB protectant on your parts. Um, my daughter did French braids last summer and her, uh, the parts in between her braids that skin got sunburned. So you want to protect your scalp as well. So if you're doing a protective styles where you have a lot of parts or even you know in your regular part, if you're going to be out for an extended amount of time without a hat or other type, other type of protection on your head, you'll want to make sure that you, um, you put some UBV uh, protection on that part so that it doesn't get sunburned. Also, you want to do this area as well, especially if you have your hair pulled back right at the top of your forehead. Be sure to get your ears um, and get your ears as well because those can really get sunburned. I didn't mention this earlier, but the sun actually breaks down the protein um, in our hair. So when you do your deep conditioner, consider using. Um, a deep, deep conditioner that either, either has protein, it says is a protein conditioner, or that has, you know, or that's labeled a keratin kind of conditioner because that will help to repair your hair and bring that, uh, your protein level back. Now I say that, but I also want you to recognize I'll, if you are protein sensitive, then, you know, don't go overboard with it. Just do, you know, do a uh, protein treatment on a more regular basis than you would have otherwise. You want to stay away from this group of products right here. Alcohol, peroxide, lemon juice, um, and any hair care product that says it will lighten your hair in the sun. I think that's it. So I hope this information was helpful. Um, let me know if uh, you have any other tips to add by leaving a comment below. Please don't forget to subscribe or rate and share this you know, with others if you think that uh, they benefit from the information as well. Um, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys so much. I appreciate your support, everything. Um, and I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.